Welcome back to another episode uh, with the Materials for the Arts conversation. Tonight, we're excited to be joined with Armita Rafat, and she is a fantastic artist who's going to share with us a little of the process of how she makes her work. We're going to get a chance to see some of her work. Um, but most importantly, to begin, let me just remember to remind you that we're here from Materials for the Arts which is this fantastic place in New York City where we collect leftover materials from companies and we donate those materials to artists and to individuals. And so including schools, uh, all sorts of community centers and all sorts of people that are doing fantastic art projects in New York City. And so we bring uh, every month a different artist to meet with you to share their approach and how they reuse materials. So uh, tonight we're excited to be joined with Armita. Um, hello, Armita, welcome for joining us. Hi, John, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Material for the Arts, for inviting me. Yeah, I look forward to our conversation. All right, and um, you know, I, I, I love your artwork and, and I'm thank looking you. forward to hearing, hearing a little bit more about your approach. Um, uh, you know, just to let everyone know, um, Armita is a New York based sculptor and installation artist uh, working with themes of architectural transfiguration and hybridity. Um, but she's exhibited her, her artwork nationally and internationally. And so we're, we're really lucky to have a chance to, to chat so with her. Um, and so we've got some, some images here that we're going to bring up and, and talk mm -hmm. about um, and get into some questions. Um, and, and so just, just to kind of start out right away, I mean, you know, the, the questions will, in a sense, you know, center a little bit around materiality and, and some of the themes of materials for the arts, um, but we'll see, you know, what direction the conversation goes in. Um, but, you know, so one, one of the things that's interesting about the types of materials we get at materials for the arts is that we get um, multiples of objects. So mm -hmm. we'll get like like a widget, like a little twisty object, but we'll get like thousands of them or a box, thousands of them. Um, so, you know, when we pull up your work, we're gonna see, I see lots of um, elements, kind of modular elements that are repeated in the work. Um, so I thought right away, I thought that would be interesting because when it comes to reuse, there's, there's like taking something like a shoe, right? And transforming it into something else. But yeah. there's this other cool process, which is that like, do you have like a, a thousand of something or 10 or 20 of something? So you know, uh, right away, I'm looking at this, this image right here. And I wonder if you, yeah, you just talk a little bit about, you know, just to, to your work and, and start and, and about this modular quality. Absolutely. I think the first thing I want to say about the work is that the fabric that you see in this work and also the little blue tile in the middle, not the Art, Art Nouveau one, was found at Material for the Art, actually. Yeah, so, <laughs> so this uh, piece directly used material that I uh, got from there. But in general, um, uh, I'm very much interested in repetitive forms and seeing like what will happen if I take one form and uh, how many, uh, what kind of compositions I can create and how can I expand it? What challenges does it have for me? What possibilities does it have for me? And um, see what it gives to me. And um, I've been doing that for a while. And I think one of the reasons that I first became interested in the modular forms is that my, um, uh, a lot of my pieces are inspired by ornamentation and Islamic architecture, and they're inspired by a very specific form that it's an originality, it's also modular. So I think um, that uh, also was uh, the starting point of the direction that I took. And uh, for me, it's interesting that um, uh, when I take these uh, historical forms uh, that date back to the 10th century, and they're called Mogarnas, and uh, reimagine them, rearrange them, reconstruct them with a variety of very contemporary material, and, you know, basically break that um, regular structure that they had and um, bring them to a new context and, um, and install them or create them in another in a very different place far away from its origin of creation. I'm curious to see like 
what kind of readings I can bring uh, to this historical form and also how can I bring these mm, specific modular forms to the language of contemporary sculpture, which is something that I do and I'm interested in. The forms that are, you're, you're referring to throughout that are kind of referencing this um, kind of historical patterning technique that you see yes, yes. in lots of different situations that is that are those objects that you've you, that you've found and you've repeatedly used them or is it what is that made out of? I created them actually they are cast in resin and plastic uh -huh. so I have I create multiples of them and they are basically three main um, uh, particles and I create all the sculptures with uh, repetition of that three main particles that are cast in resin. Then, of course, you know, I color them. I, uh, you know, use the, a variety of material. I change them. Yeah, like here is uh, one oh, yeah. example of mm -hmm. um, how I use it. This is a large piece. And um, uh, again, it's a, a variation and, if, and it's a way of continuing that a repetitive modular form and it's um, of course combined with a lot of material that I collect and I love like styrofoam, fabric, mirrors, tiles and uh, all these things yeah. So that's right so I see that you know there are you know mixture of, of you know some of these things that are cast and created but then also these lots of found Yes. Um, materials yes. and yes. you know that's the material series thing would you be able to just talk a little bit about you know maybe why you reuse material in your work? yes of course um in general uh, you know material and touching the material feeling them feeling their textures and surfaces it's really essential in my work i work very intuitively and honestly a lot of times this material guides me and some of the, and I collect material, like I have shelves of material in my studio that are like consist of like, for instance, fabrics, styrofoam, mirrors, uh, different kind of tiles, like uh, some of them are found tiles and glass walls and uh, other glass objects, glass lamps and uh, different things that I collect and I keep them in the studio and some of them stay there for a very long time. And then eventually when an idea comes, I bring it to the, to the piece. So this, in this specific piece, there are found material. The glass that is here was originally, I think was part of a glass lamp. And for me, um, uh, I, it was really, really um, exciting because it goes back to the concept of my work that you take something that originally existed and take it out of its original context and reimagine it with different material and bring and create something totally new out of it. Both the tile that are used here and um, uh, um, glass are found and the tile was even broken <laughs> and uh, I picked it up. I asked uh, uh, someone to give it to me. Uh, instead of like throwing it away. And I used that the fragments of it in the piece. And uh, yeah, and yeah, so that's how this uh, piece um, uh, became into the shape. And um, uh, everyone that uh, knows me, like my friends and family, they know like there if there is a broken glass bowl or a broken <laughs> lamp that no one wants, they can give to me. And a lot of times I use them um, in my work and um, you know the history of them is also interesting especially like in a few other pieces I have used Art Novo uh, tiles specifically in the first piece that we showed if we could go back to that image of the uh, my first piece uh, yeah that one uh, so that one that was installed in a specific place uh, that had a unique history it was originally the space was a um, I think it was a butcher house and which had original uh, Art Noble tiles and uh, the owners and the directors gifted me one of the tiles and I wanted to use it in the piece because I felt like it's like you bring layers of different history and different times and put them on top of each other and that made 
conceptually sense to me in this piece that is also inspired by Modernas and also has that very new contemporary plasticky fabric that I found that material for the arts and I love. And uh, yeah, so uh, the history of some of the material interests me. Yeah, and specifically the tiles, the art novel ones. And definitely it seems like there's a fabric is something that's that's present in the work. Yes, yes. Throughout. And 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 I mean I, to me I see this kind of you know all these various almost conversations going on there's the this kind of this pattern almost like you know that that you're referring to the history of and all the different layers. but then it, it has these you know very uh you know kind of specific design and then there's these like very organic kind of elements to it as well yeah. you know where it kind of melts away and then the tiles you know become so prominent even in the 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 the, the the sculptural pieces that uh, the 3d pieces that on the pedestals the pedestals are covered with like the white tiles yes, as well yes yeah you I'm, know? yeah i'm um uh interested in the subway tiles always like when i go in new york those subway tiles uh, are inspiring for me so that's why especially on the pedestal one i wanted to use a certain color, kind of tile that references that mm -hmm. and um also, like going back to what you say, I do use like very geometric forms in combination with very organic shapes. And I like that kind of contrast and juxtaposition. And in general, when material come next to each other, there's a certain kind of tension that they can create or a certain kind of dialogue that they create with each other. So that is always um, interesting for me. And always, and for instance, thinking like, uh, what would happen if I take some material that do not make sense to exist next to each other and find a way to create a sculpture and bring, in, bring them into a harmony? What would that happen? I like that challenge actually very much. You, so, you can feel that in the work. I mean, it, to oh, me, okay. <laughs> that's right there. And it's done so gently and so delicately but immediately and and i feel that from the, the shapes but also yeah from the materials you know that yeah, yeah. some are so gentle and almost ephemeral and some are hard you know and there's that you know even the tiles are pretty pretty hard you know physically uh so this piece has been built through art and buildings uh they had this uh building in new york on fifth avenue that has this lobby that has a curved wall and I really like the challenge of the curved wall and um, the fact that there were uh, uh, there was daylight coming um, in inside the lobby from the um, glass doors that were there. And yeah, so sometimes I make uh, pieces that are made uh, for a specific place, which with considering uh, the structure of that space uh, and. Um, it, and yeah, the size of that space. So this is one of those pieces. And I used iridescent fabric because um, the way the light played in the space on it really made changes to the color of the fabrics and the way people mm. would move around it. Um, they would see like different colors from different angles, which would change from blue to green. Uh, yeah, so that's how this piece came about and now again it's installed in another location for art and buildings in um, uh, florida west palm beach it was recently installed there again and, yeah. and does that that other location also have a curved wall no like no How i had to install i had to change a little bit the structure of it to oh, wow. make it um fit uh um a normal wall, straight, straight wall, not a, <laughs> That's cool. not, a, not a curved wall, a little bit in the structure. Yeah, some movements have to be changed. But um, because the forms are modular and they're flexible, and again, this is something that I like about modular and repetitive forms is that they give me so many possibilities of uh, expanding them and adjusting them to new spaces. So that is another interest for me in these kind of forms. It almost reminds me of, you know, um, if you see, you know, microscopic image of cells reproducing or plants or algae or, mm. you know, organic forms in general, um, you know, the edges are kind of 
it's like it's grown it literally feels like it's growing you know like it's actually growing on the walls there to me um yeah, you know, yeah. I, I feel that i feel that kind of inner that balance um mm -hmm. so i could see how it could move to different spaces and kind of create its own its own form well, that's, um, really, that's interesting <laughs> thank you <laughs> so um one of the things i noticed in some of the pieces um was the use of of picture frames yeah so instead of like the traditional you know we talk about the pest but instead of the traditional yeah. frame it's like you're looking and you see like an actual piece of the picture frame being used almost as, a, as part of the yeah. object um, I don't know if you could talk a little bit about why you why you do that. So these picture frames have also been collected <clears throat> from material for the arts. Again, <laughs> thank you to you guys. I think I collected them in 2015 or 2016, if I remember correctly. And I didn't use them until 2018. I made this piece. This was the first one I made with the picture frames, which was in 2018. And then later on in 2020 and 21, I made more. Um, I immediately became attracted to the uh, picture frames when I saw them in a pile of box um, and I knew that I wanted to collect them. I didn't know why I wanted to collect them at that moment, but I knew that at some point I'm going to use it. I was in a way, in a way they com communicated with me. I connected with them. I think one of the reasons was that they were not complete picture frames they were fragmented and some of them were broken and uh also i like the colors that they were this kind of matte gold or matte silver they also some of them had pattern they were variation and i picked up the mixture of them and they were different sizes i picked different sizes and um also like um sometimes when i think of some of my work i feel uh, the pieces are fragment of something that used to be bigger or or fragment of an imaginary whole that once existed in certain pieces i think of that concept so the fact that these picture frames were there and they were already uh like um uh broken not not broken but uh divided basically mm -hmm. not in the complete form uh made sense for me to use it in the, my work and uh also it, oh, also there is the matter of aesthetic a lot of time comes like what makes sense in the piece what composite what helps the composition what kind of what material can help with the tensions that i want to create in the work so uh uh, besides um, uh, the conceptual part, always also the aesthetic is also comes to mind, and I think about that uh, the whole composition when I use the uh, material, specifically the picture frames here. <laughs> this is another one. This is a new one. This strips is of the frame in there yes. as like objects. Yeah. yeah. This is again a new one. This is 2021, and I use those uh, subway tiles that that are similar to subway tiles, not exactly like them behind it. And I liked uh, to make them in a way like a little bit like um, dirty with paint and gritty. And again, this was the this was the first piece that I think I used the found glass, and I had that broken blue glass in my studio for a while and i had never used it so i thought it would be exciting if i bring it with that um, uh, uh, combination and uh, use the picture frames use the uh, uh, broken glasses and create something by connecting they, uh, basically there were three broken i think lamps and one broken plate there are different variations of color and I connected and combined them together and created that shape. And um, the other parts are mirror. Uh, the front mirror, is, the front one is like a painted mirror that's painted in the back of the, it's painted in the back of the mirror. And it's, uh, I found that in a bazaar in Iran, in Shiraz. And because it was broken and I really loved it, the guy gave it to me for free. And uh, I bought other objects from him. So I think he was nice and said, okay, this is your gift. You love it, it's broken, <laughs> we don't need it. <laughs> and, <I'm t> <laughs> and, and it's the, the 
And I loved it. And I knew that I can use it in a way and combine it with other material and bring it uh, into the work and create a whole harmony out of it. So uh, that's how the material of that piece are, yeah, put together. I, I mean, I, I, it's, it's beautiful. And it's so, you know, such an amazing and interesting composition. And I think it's great for people to see this because um you know for an artist like yourself it's like you're describing in your studio you've got all these different things but for yeah. you maybe like a, a precious you know object might be worth just as much as a broken one in terms of how you use them there are mm -hmm. materials that become available and so i think it's great for all of us to remember that you know just to, to look around at the materials around us some things that are overlooked might be some of the the best art supplies and, and most Ab available. absolutely absolutely i always think like at least for myself i think i can make art with anything i don't need to go to the stores and always buy new stuff i i, I just something i find old that inspires me i use it even some of my sculptures from old times i deassemble them and reuse the material in those again in other pieces. So not a lot of things go to waste in my studio. And sometimes <laughs> I have a studio with a community. It's with the Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts. So sometimes some stuff that the other artists do not want yeah. and want to throw away, sometimes I ask for them or get them specifically from styrofoams and stuff. And I use them in my work. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. Um, so I, I have a question. So, you know, we were you were you were you kind of touched on it a couple of times, but um, I mean, the work that, you, you know, that we're seeing, it's so beautiful in these these vivid like blues and these intense colors and the dialogue of the shapes. Um, but also it seems and you, you touched on that, that you really kind of almost there's an aesthetic of deterioration that I see where it's like you're kind of like, you um, showing objects or like you said you wanted to feel dirty i think you use that word or, you know you wanted you to feel like to add this element to it mm -hmm. um where it, it's an, it, it, you can if there's this textural quality some of it has almost like a roughness to it and the edges like you're saying almost like it used to be a certain way but now it's changed mm -hmm. i don't know I, I i find a number of different artists that work um think about it and there's there can be such a beauty that comes with it you know rust or you know just all these things but I just, yes. if you could talk about your that's something you think about or you know what your thoughts are um no absolutely i mean there was a period in my career especially when i was an art student in chicago i think like 20 2007 2008 and when i had just graduated 2009 2010 everything i made was uh, on purpose based on the aesthetic of decay and things that are falling apart. I was very much interested in that at that time. And I was reading about it and um, uh, reading about destruction, buildings that fall apart. That was interest at a specific area of my career. So um, I would use material on purpose that they would change during time. For instance, I used uh, spices, specifically turmeric in my work, and the smell of it will go away after a while. Or I would use paper mache in a way that um, after like a few months, the cracks would change. So it would look different. So I really wanted to dig into that kind of aesthetic. And also I would use torn uh, fabrics uh, that are broken. Uh, I was very much interested in it at that time, but you know, nowadays I, uh, that is not my interest anymore. Uh, I'm still interested in a work that look uh, fragile. Some of them are seem like falling apart, but at the same time, they're sturdy actually. I really like to play with that kind of paradox in the work. It's very interesting for me to create that a feeling in the work. So I think some of the choices of the material and the aesthetic that I use is to create that paradox in the work. Also, uh, I can say even material, for instance, glass might feel like, oh, what a fragile material, you know, it's so fragile, it will breakable, it falls, but 
historically, glass has survived, many glass objects have survived for hundreds and thousands of years. So even that material has that quality of looking fragile, but being sturdy and surviving, you know? So that paradox is interesting for me now. So it's not just about like that decay aesthetic that I used to love when I was um, first starting my uh, professional career, yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. Um, the, you know, you, so you, would you be able to talk about any other, you know, maybe stories of any other influences that you think might be meaningful to talk about that, that kind of led your work to where it is today? Um, okay. Not necessarily <laughs> influences of okay. artists, but just influences of okay. philosophies or just Absolutely. Uh, uh, because I, mean, I think I, that's interesting to hear that helps me even yeah. see your work even more, you know, it's interesting, yeah. So I will, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, in general, John, I'm a kind of artist that works very intuitively. So whatever I read, whatever I'm watching, what, maybe, on, maybe on the news that day, whatever, like something that I'm feeling deeply um, in a, a special day, that finds its way to the uh, work in a way. And um, yeah, that's uh, how I, uh, in general, work. But uh, going back uh, to your question, uh, there are certain things that have really inspired me in my work in different times, uh, uh, periods of my career. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, I first got, uh, I'm from uh, Iran, so I grew up in Tehran, and uh, I went to school in Tehran, I got my BFA there, and the first time I really, really got excited about Islamic architecture and really started to appreciate it was when I was a student there and I was taking like an art history class in Islamic architecture. Um, there was a professor and she was a very influential professor for me. And she was extremely passionate uh, about Islamic architecture and the way that um, she looked at it and she approached the subject was not necessarily just from the perspective of religion, but a very open ended uh, perspective, the forms, the everything, the philosophy, all of it. And that um, I think really resonated with me and made me appreciate it more. And I think because of that, uh, later on, I started using elements of Islamic architecture in my work. So I, I think like uh, that is when it uh, clicked for me. And I find mm. that I appreciate this kind of work, what is behind it, this aesthetic. Uh, that's uh, about the Islamic architecture, but also, uh, you know, my background is in painting. That's interesting that I make sculptural mm. stuff. Both in Tehran, I studied painting, and also at Artists of Chicago, I studied painting, which, uh, of course, the approaches were different. In Tehran, during my time studying painting, it was more like traditional painting I was learning. I was not allowed to, um, at that time, now it's different. Uh, I couldn't uh, experiment with sculptural material and stuff. I should, when you're a painter, you should do painting, which was mm -hmm. different in Art Institute of Chicago, which was, uh, um, uh, you could approach, you could have different approaches. So um, when I moved, uh, I moved from Tehran to America in 2003. I didn't end up uh, directly in Chicago. I first, for a very short period of time, I lived in San Francisco. And in San Francisco, uh, that, uh, I wanted to do experimentation with ceramics. So I took two semesters of ceramic at San Francisco Art Institute. And I think that was turning point in my career from a painting to someone who realized that I love that hands-on approach. I love to touch the material. I love to feel it. It will guide me. And from there on was that when I went to Artists of Chicago, I like most, I didn't do painting. Most of the stuff I made were with 3D material and with paper mache, with fiber. And that's, uh, I think, um, how my career uh, developed from a painter to then a little bit of ceramic to now that I make this 
multimedia, different sculptures with a variety of material. That's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that answers the question, does that? It just begins the questions. No, it's, it's, it's <laughs> no, I mean, it, it does, it does start to, I mean, you know, I just had, I mean, so, I mean, just one question I have is, is, I mean, you know, the history of you know, Islamic architecture and, you know, the, just the exploration of art through the lens of like a non-figurative approach, um, you know, when in terms of coming to patterns and designs and just yeah. how sophisticated, you know, that can become. And then um, I can see, you know, see that in, in the work so immediately. Um, and then the painting approach, I noticed you really specifically, there's, there's some blues that you really tend to use, at least in this series here. Yeah. Is there a reason for that choice of that, that, that blue? Oh, uh, you know, I was, uh, I mean, of course I'm uh, interested in the color of blue because that magnificent, fascinating blue, it's seen in so many um, like masterpieces of Islamic architecture, especially in Iran, in a city like Esfahan. I've been there many times, I've seen it. Again, there was a period in my life that I was newer in America and I really wanted to imitate those colors. Like, again, this is like 2006, seven. So I would even bring pigments back from I I Iran awesome. to have the specific pigments and make those turquoise blue or the other, uh, um, the other kinds of blue exactly the same. But I feel like, um, um, as an artist, our needs and approaches change. When you're longer in a different country, then uh, I, there was no need for me at that time anymore to bring that exact blue. Although I, I was still in love with blue and uh, its symbolism of water and everything. Uh, so I use this different blue that's a combination of different kinds of pigments and paints and um it's not the exact blue as the islamic architecture but i feel it's still a, a unique blue that i really 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 like and uh i yeah i love it and yeah. uh, connect with it yeah and i bring it with different colors so always like when you combine variety of colors with each other the effect and the tonality of colors are affected from a painting perspective you know so uh yeah, yeah it's so, just 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 beautiful thank you so much thank you and i love seeing these these images and also just seeing the approach in various manifestations you know um for this this series here so um you know I, I i know this is work that you've completed yes um what are you up to is this is this are you heading in this similar direction or in terms of the work you're working on like right now is it similar to this or is it going on new directions or um i'd love if you could just you know tell us a little bit about what you're what you're working on right now um, sure, sure. So I'm, uh, I mean, I'm still working on a few sculptures, specifically, uh, there's one that has glass on it. It's, um, I'm working on that, but also I'm working a lot in paper. Um, I am doing a residency with uh, Dia Donne, and it's, um, I've done half of it and half of it is left, but it's the first time that I'm really exploring working with paper pop. I've never, I've worked with paper mache, but never like in a wet studio creating like um, a handmade paper from scratch. It's very new for me. And at the same time, very exciting for me. And I've done some explorations there. And um, for me, when I approached the paper, it was like, uh, how can I translate my 3D sculptural practice into a 2D practice, but still keeping a little bit of that um, dimensional effect in it? Uh, that was my thought. So that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, but uh, the way that I approach um, uh, paper, the paper works is very similar to the way I work with my sculptures in the terms that I use again layers of material on top of each other i use textile i use fabric i use metal mesh even i use the tile in one of the paper pieces so 
uh, and uh, taking layers, adding layers, uh, editing, deleting, the same approach that I do with the sculptures is happening in the papers. And I really want to see what will happen at the end of this residency and uh, what the introduction of this amazing, amazing, brilliant material will do to my sculptures. How will it inspire it? So even I'm looking forward to it to do, and I probably have a better answer uh for you for this question in a few months i think yeah it seems like you know part of your process is definitely explore exploratory you know as yes, you go yes. um but i mean it seems like you've been pushing boundaries really for a long time um in terms of you know supposedly being identified as a painter and then adding ceramics and then yes. doing this yeah. what is it that kind of is you know why do you push the boundaries and keep evolving the work you know what's the where does that come from what's that motivation i don't know like um uh, instead of just saying oh i'm just gonna do it like the traditional painting you know why material do something for me i don't know like uh, they inspire me like each of them has that certain unique quality that can lead the work to a certain direction i mean it's uh, I, I have this strange love for material and all, like wood has this quality, styrofoam has this very unique quality, uh, fabric, depending on what kind of fabric, if it's like plastic fabric, if it's iridescent, if it's translucent fabric, transparent, all of them have different qualities that really can uh, shape the work in a very different way. So anytime I'm introduced to a new material, um, I get inspired. Like, uh, I want to see what can I do with it. It uh, something, it's like a light bulb <laughs> turns on, something gets clicked. And uh, yeah, I think that's why I do it. And I hope uh, to see after paper what's going to be next for me exactly yeah that, I, know. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean i'm the i know exactly what I mean. and at materials the arts it's just so hard not to be um yeah. you know the mind to just go in all sorts of directions of what to do but i think it's great that you're you're tackling paper as a and just continuing uh, to adventure that sounds great i'm looking forward to, to seeing seeing what the next phase of that yeah yeah i'm looking forward to that <laughs> myself <laughs> Well, um, thank you so much for taking taking the time today to to chat with me and to share about your work with our with our audience and to give us some insight into the story behind you know how you've come to this work and we're so thankful um, and not only that I'm so so glad that you're you're making the work you are and and uh, so inspiring much. people and, and and myself included. Um, so so thank you so much and. Um, if, if anyone um, wants to check out your work, um, we'll have the website here on the link below. Um, and we encourage everyone to continue to follow the fantastic career of Armita Rafat. Thank you thank, so much. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank Absolutely. you, Material for the Arts, really, for what you do and how you inspire artists. It's it's amazing organization. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye.